A system that builds a strong foundation is one of the most important things a young footballer can have. But can that system be found here in China? I'm here in the small industrial town of Weifang, located in the Shandong province. Shandong is known for creating some amazing football players, and many of the country's top players started their careers here at the Shandong Lunang Taishan Youth Football Club. In this episode, we'll talk about some of the different systems that China is using to teach China's youth about football. China's education system demands that many parents provide their children with the best schooling possible, which is commonly seen as a basic guarantee to secure a child's future. But balancing a child's mental and physical development is a problem China has yet to come to terms with. Schools in Europe, on the other hand, seem to have found a solution. Liverpool insisted that those players got an education, so those those children had to go to college, and they weren't allowed to continue on their youth training scholarship. Unless they got educated. When people in China think of football, the people who play the game, they usually think it is a group of people that lack an education. Football schools across China are trying different ways to teach the next generation. Some hire local coaches with a sports background or retired athletes to teach the youth. Others simply send their students abroad. Absolutely madness. The current project of sending youth players to Europe. Is exactly the same as the previous ones to Brazil and to Hungary in, in different times.、Um, the difference probably is it's much more expensive now, but it is equally a waste of time. <laughs> Most of the children sent overseas do not possess high-level skills because they were not picked from a huge amount of children. They were picked from the basis of tens of thousands. There will be very few talented kids. Even if you send them abroad, there will be little chance they can succeed in the future. So it is not possible to cultivate talent by simply sending players abroad. As a pioneer in the way China trains youth football players, the Lu Nang Taishan Football School chose another way. Back in July of 2014, Lu Nang Brazil Sports Center officially opened in Sao Paulo. Which allowed Lu Nang to both send their students to Sao Paulo for training and hire four Brazilian coaches to send to China. In your time here, what do you think is the difference between the way football is taught here versus the way it's taught in Brazil? The first day I got here, I started trying to improve the youth training environment in China, especially in Lu Nang Football School. In Brazil, the focus on our players is multifaceted. We don't just pay attention to their performance on the pitch, but everything else outside the pitch. Secondly, some coaches' concept of football is in advance. We came here trying to bring them progressive football concepts, and so far, I think we have achieved that goal. Yu Chonglei is part of the first batch of players who went to Brazil for training, and before that, he trained at the Lu Nang Football School for eight years. After training for three months in Brazil, he was able to recognize the differences between the training methods of the two countries. The greatest feeling for me in Brazil is getting to train with foreigners and also to compete with them. The friendly matches helped me to improve very quickly. Three months of training in Brazil equals one or two years in China. And Lu Nang isn't the only football school in the country that is trying this new way of training. In our school, the process of choosing talent, training, organizing matches, and assessment are all carried out by our Real Madrid team. My mission is to let the Chinese coaches get a feel for the training ideas and the methods. And after two years, it turned out the Spanish concepts were right. With all the different training methods out there, the essential part is the coach. As more kids in China get into playing football, the question becomes: Will China have enough coaches to fill the demand? This is a very, very big problem. It is that you start with the talent acquisition. There will be a huge lack of coaches. It all starts with the issue of the coach's interest. Why would the coach like to stay here to teach kids how to play football? Who are they, and what would their salaries be? About a year ago. The Hunan City Council spent more than a million RMB to pay for coaches, around 6,000 to 7 RMB per coach for one month, and let them teach in the communities 
or in schools. According to the Japanese Football Association, all the Japanese players who are willing to be a professional coach are required to have certain hours to teach the community with no pay. I had an interview with the JFA secretary. He said that free teaching is the key reason behind Japan's success in football in the past 20 years. But in China, many professional football players or coaches have very limited social resources. If there was some kind of incentive to do what they do in Japan, their energy would be activated. So I strongly recommend there should be a professional player plan, where after an old professional footballer retires, they could have the opportunity to teach the kids. What do we need most right now? Professional coaches. We could learn from Japan and train the kids and coaches at the same time and let more qualified coaches into the school for football. I believe if we do that, it will yield twice the result with half the effort. Although China might not have enough coaches to teach youth football to everyone, are professional coaches even necessary for children who are just learning how to play the game? Before the age of six, the parents could teach football to their child. It's very simple, just to teach the kid how to control the ball. You can even do that at home. It's like there is no need to use a college professor to teach a kid one plus one equals two. In the early stages, it's just the teachers encouraging the children to play. It should be like a pyramid. While we are talking about children, we should focus on fostering their interests. For a child that is around six or seven years old, we should encourage them to play games using football. On the next stage, for example, seven to eight years old, we could start organizing training, but on a very small scale, with maybe six to seven children, and base the training on their interests. But for children above the age of ten, we could add professional training such as learning technique and football concepts to increase their accomplishments in the sport. But some of the foreign coaches who came to teach in China see the issue differently. The difference between a professional coach and perhaps a, you know a volunteer parent or a, or a school teacher is that the professional coach coaches football every single day.、Um, we understand the children. We understand the children's needs. And we can provide those children with, with everything that they need, from from a football's perspective to a, a psychological and a personality perspective as well. So, professional coaching for the young children is absolutely vital. There are still many things left to be tested in the current training system, and only time will tell if the system is strong. But one thing is for sure: any system cannot be successful without taking live matches into account. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the meaning of those matches. Yeah, yeah!